Yesterday, Audacity released version 3.4.0, and there's one little glitch in it that I want to show you that might be a showstopper for you unless you know the workaround. Hello friends, Mike Adams here with Learn Audacity. In this video, I'm going to show you a glitch, which could actually be a big glitch if you don't know the workaround in the just released version 3.4.0 of Audacity. So let's take a look at my screen here. This is a short piece of audio that I laid down just a few minutes ago using the internal mic on my MacBook Pro. It's not good audio. In fact, it's pretty bad audio, but I just want to use it to show you something. When I record audio, it's usually with a 24-bit bit depth or a bit depth of 24 bits. That just simply means that whether my sample rate is set at 48,000 hertz or 44,100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz, whatever my sample rate is set at, the bit depth is the amount of information that's gathered per each sample. I normally record at a 24-bit bit depth. That means that each one of my 48,000 samples contains 24 bits of information. Typically, the higher your sample rate and the higher your bit depth, the better the reproduction of your audio is going to be. So you can see here that when I look at my preferences window here in Audacity, and again, I'm on a Mac, so your preferences window might be in a little bit different location than mine. But you can see down here that I've got my default sample format at 24 bits. That's the bit depth of my audio. I record in 24-bit because my audio interface is at 24-bit. And so I just transfer that right over into Audacity. I've never had a problem with that until now. In version 3.4.0, I can no longer use a default sample format or a bit depth of 24 bits. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to click OK here, and I'm going to go up and start monitoring my audio. And again, my audio is, it isn't the audio that you're listening to. It's just my internal microphone on my laptop. So if I click here and I enable monitoring, now this says enable silent monitoring in 3.4. It used to just say enable monitoring. So we've got a third word in there now. But watch what happens when I start monitoring my input. It immediately pegs out. I immediately get this horrible digital distortion. And let me show you what it looks like when it's recording and what it sounds like when it's being played back. Now I'm going to push record, but I need to tell you that I've got my preferences set to always record on a new track. And so when I press record here in just a moment, you're going to see a new track come in and it's going to put that audio on that new track. I just wanted you to know that so you're not surprised by it. So let's press record and see what we can do. So we're recording and you can see that that distorted digital distortion or that distorted digital audio is all it's playing on track two. So I'm going to stop recording and then I'm going to solo that track. And let's get back to the beginning and I'm going to play it for you and listen to how horrible this sounds. We'll just play a couple seconds of it. So in and among that digital distortion, you can hear underneath it my audio. You can hear me saying something. It sounds kind of sci-fi-ish. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe if you're in the sci-fi and you're looking for a good sci-fi effect, this could work for you. But other than that, it's just really bad, poor audio, and it's unusable. You can't record like this. Version 3.4.0 won't record with a 24-bit bit depth. This is what you get. Now let me show you what happens when I put it back to 32-bit float. Let's go back to my screen. So I'm going to delete that bottom track that we just did, and I'm going to release the mute off of this one, and I'm going to go back up to the preferences window, and this time I'm going to select 32-bit float. Now you can also select 16-bit, which I would never record anything in 16-bit anymore, but 32-bit float, you know, that's, that's good. That's doable. I can certainly use that. I'm just not used to using it because like I mentioned earlier, I record in 24-bit. So let's select 32-bit float. Everything else is the same. I'm going to click OK. Maybe. There it goes. And now when I come back up to monitor and I enable monitoring, problem solved. So if you're seeing this digital distortion in your 
version of Audacity, double check that bit depth. If you've got it set at 24 bits, you're going to get that digital audio interference and distortion, and it's going to stop you from recording. So make sure you've got 32 bit selected there. I'm going to skip back to the beginning on this one. And something that I had turned into the Audacity forum a couple of months ago is that when I'm playing back a track like this one and I've got real time effects on it, like I do with this one, and I've got them enabled, the track would only play for less than a second and then stop. It would always freeze up. And I heard back from Audacity today that in version 3.4.0, that problem was solved and it truly is solved. I can now play this back and not have any kind of delay on it at all. So let's do that right now. I'm going to press the space bar to play through this a little bit. And you'll see that we're not, I'm not getting that delay that I used to have where it would actually stop the audio. I'm recording this through the uh, built-in microphone on my MacBook Pro. It's not a good recording. There's a lot of room noise here, a lot of noise floor, and probably some echo. But I just wanted to lay a track down here in order to manipulate it a little bit. So kudos to Audacity for fixing that problem for us or for me. I don't know if anyone else was having that problem, but I certainly was. Most of the upgrades in version 3.4.0, if not all of them, concern music. I'm going to link Audacity's video in the description of this video so that you can go watch it. It's got a high-level overview of what they've added in version 3.4.0 for music producers. I'm not a music producer. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. I do spoken word content. That means podcasts. That means voiceovers. That means audiobooks. And I don't do music anymore. So most of these upgrades, if not all of these upgrades in version 3.4.0 don't really apply to me. So that's a little disappointing to me because I was hoping that those of us who do spoken word content only would benefit a little bit from version 3.4.0 but that's not the case. There's really nothing significant here for us, but if you're doing music, there's some great stuff in here. Again, I'll link to that video in the description here because they explain it a lot better than I could. And they give you a nice high-level overview of what's new in 3.4.0 for musicians or music producers. But let's go back to my screen. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is that, you know, you can rescan your audio devices here on the transport menu. It's been that way for a long time now. That means that if you start Audacity and then subsequent to your starting Audacity, you plug in some device, Audacity has to know that it's there. And the way that you force Audacity to know that it's there is by going to the transport dropdown menu and then rescan audio devices. And Audacity would at that point go out, look at your system, and Get the new information about the stuff that you've plugged in after having started Audacity. It saves you from having to restart Audacity each time. Well, I noticed that in version 3.4.0, in the audio setup button, you now have that option as well. I went back and looked at version 3.3.3, and that wasn't there, but it's here in 3.4.0. So I'm really glad. So that's a step saver. It saves you from having to go up to the transport menu. You can get to all of your audio settings right here in the audio setup button. That's a good thing. So, hey, that's all I have for you in this video. I just wanted to show you that little bug there that's in Audacity and show you the workaround for it in case you're experiencing the same thing. Hey, just a reminder, I do teach in-depth Audacity courses at audacitybootcamp.com, audacitybootcamp.com. And more recently, I've become a guest Audacity instructor at Harvard University's online school. So life has been busy over here. I have been immersed into Audacity deeper than I ever thought that I would. So if you're interested in a deep dive into Audacity, whether it's for podcasting or audiobook narration using Audacity, head on over to audacitybootcamp.com and check out my courses there. I think you're going to like what you see at the Audacity Bootcamp. So hopefully I'll see you there. And until next time, y'all take care.